Jackie and Dale. Okay, so back to our talk today. In the words of religious science founder Dr. Ernest Holmes from his Science of Mind book, freedom is the birthright of every living soul. Our inherent nature is forever seeking to express itself in terms of freedom. We do well to listen to this inner voice, for it tells us of a life wonderful in its scope and a love beyond our fondest dreams. That man could work or could write. He could work too, but he could write. <laughs> the words of Dr. Holmes are serving as our foundation this month as we apply the freedom factor, freedom in every aspect of our lives, and today, it's freedom to experience peace. To ensure that we're on the same page, let's define peace. There are lots of ways that we can define the term, and one of my favorite ways of describing it, definitions, is peace is not the absence of conflict, but the serenity in the midst of it. It's so true. Stuff is going to happen. It always does. We will not eliminate conflict in our human experiences. It's all part of it. We can, however, align, align with the peace that is within us, that deep well-being, that sense of absolute well-being. We, we have complete access to it all the time. Just knowing that it's there, that we connect, can connect with it is the gift. Holmes tells us in his, his definition of peace, peace is a state of inner calm, an inner calm so complete that nothing can disturb it. That's the way to be, right? <laughs> and then life happens. There's a wonderful parable that profoundly illustrates this definition. There was once a king who offered a prize to the artist who could paint the best picture of peace. Many artists tried. The king looked at all the pictures, but there were only two that he thought really captured the essence of peace. And so he had to choose between the two. One picture was of a calm lake. The lake was the perfect mirror for the peaceful towering mountains which were surrounding it and overhead a blue sky with the puffy white clouds. All who saw that picture thought it was the perfect picture of peace. The other picture had mountains in it too, but they were rugged and bare. Above was an angry sky from which rain fell, in which lightning played and came down upon the side of the mountain, and there was this foaming waterfall and this did not look peaceful in the picture at all. But upon closer inspection, you could see behind the waterfall a tiny bush growing in a crack of the rock. And there in the midst of the storm was a mother bird sitting on her nest. A mother bird had built that nest and sat there in perfect peace. That's the picture that won the prize because the king realized that peace is not the absence of conflict, nor the absence of storms, but the, but the calm and serenity right in the midst of it. And we can know that we can find this because as experiences and circumstances take place in life and they don't feel so good and we're in this turmoil, this confusion, but there's something in us, or else we would never feel it. It is that divine peace within us. That's, that is the contrast, my friends. If it weren't in us, we wouldn't feel it. We wouldn't know it was there while this is all going on. And if you practice these teachings, you know that this is absolutely accessible. We don't always remember it right away, but the peace of God is always upon us. Amen? Yes, always, always. In order to have the freedom to find complete calm serenity in the midst of conflict, in order to have the freedom to find this peace, we need to understand two important things 
and apply these two important things in our lives. Ernest Holmes speaks of them in his definition of freedom in the glossary of the Science of Mind book. Real freedom means that we are created in the image of perfection and let alone and allowed to make the discovery for ourselves. Two tremendously important concepts are contained in those few words. First, that it is the very essence of perfection, of life, God, spirit, etc., is who and what we truly are. We don't stay in these bodies as we know forever, but that, that, that whole essence of perfection is eternal. And second, we are given complete choice as to how we're going to live our lives. That was the gift, the curse, sometimes it feels like, but it is the gift as well. We can discover and live from this truth of inner peace or not. That's our choice. We have that. So what, what does that have to do with peace? It has everything to do with peace. You have within you, each one of us, that absolute peace, the very essence of peace itself. And you get to choose to access it any time that you can align with it. And truly, that's why faith and belief and knowing is so important. Because it's waiting there to be accepted. It's waiting to be accepted. But in our human experiences, we often let the outside conditions, the circumstances dictate our inner life. And I find it, I find it challenging at times when we seem to be hit with something or something goes on that feels like a shock to our system to stay in that place of peace. But it, when it hits home personally, that's when it, I mean, we can pray for everyone, but then it comes to us, our close friends, our relatives, and it's like, whoa, you know? Mm -hmm. The peace is still within us. And I love, I love how Prosperity Plus in our classes that we've been been doing for 12 years, Mary Morrissey describes circumstance. Circum is surrounding and stance is where we stand. Circumstance is the conditions surrounding where we are now. But we are within us. I always feel it, this, this alignment, this, this flow of divine peace within our very being. We think our peace is being wrenched from us, but the conditions in which we spy, the conditions by, in which we stand, but that really isn't true. Our perception of the situation that holds us, that is the truth. What we perceive in the middle of any circumstance. And I have a short example to share with you. A woman dreamed she was being chased by a bear. When the bear finally cornered her, she asked in terror, are you going to kill me? Are you going to kill me? The bear calmly replied, I don't know, lady. It's your dream. Tell me. <laughs> We're living in this dream here. Are you going to live a life of peace? I sure as heck don't know. That's your choice. You tell me it's your life. You get to choose. You get to choose. And when those circumstances occur that seem to disrupt our lives, we can choose to go to that conscious breath. Just go to that deep place of consciously breathing and go within. We know, we do know, that's what all of this is about. That's why we meet on Sundays to remind each other, to be in this loving energy, that that peace of God is right within us, waiting for us to recognize it. We have been given the choice, the gift of choice. We get to choose in any situation from a perspective of serenity and calm like the bird in the nest, or from a place of fear and upset. That's our choice. And we could be one and then remember, remember and go back. Or if you're like me, we can throw this little ego temper tantrum and jump up and down and pull your hair out and just really be pissed.
pissed about the whole thing. But at the same time, you can know that there is a divine power within us that contains that peace, that strength, and that power. At the same time, it's like, if you've ever done this, uh, you can watch yourself. You can watch it. Now, I'd be like, you know, he goes throwing a little party right now, so I'm going to observe it and let her have her thing and get it out of her system. And then the peace is there. All is well. All is well. No matter what's going on around us, the Spirit of God is peace. And that can soothe and comfort us. It truly does. It took me a long time to get to that place. But once you really know that God is peace, it doesn't recognize conflict of any kind, then you can believe in that. You can believe in that even if you don't feel at peace. Even if your body is vibrating in a different energy field, you can still know that. It brings it about. The Spirit of God is upon us all the time when we allow it to be. When we call it forth, the Spirit of God is your divine connection and the place, the peace that passes all understanding. And I have five ideas to help you claim this peace and to help you raise consciousness. And I love the acronym P-E-A-C-E, because -E, I love acronyms. <laughs> so P, pray to stay connected to spirit through prayer and meditation. Not for any specific reason, not for a goal or to attain something, but just to keep this vibration, this relationship with the divine in place. This is our power. This is our strength. So that is why the prayer and meditation is so important. And the second, E, envision. Envision everyone on the planet as a member of your holy human family. Not the dysfunctional family, yeah. but the holy family. <laughs> we are right here in a holy family. No dysfunction. I remember listening a while ago to some Abraham tapes, and Jerry and Esther Hicks were in this, this uh, they called it the um, monster bus, packing. And so Jer uh, Esther's trying to pack, and Jerry was standing there, and he's in the way, and she could feel herself getting more and more annoyed and angry and really upset with Jerry. And he suggested, and he was very wise, that she pretend that he was her granddaughter, Kate, instead. <laughs> now, Kate is four years old and could do no wrong in Esther's eyes, right? So it took only a few moments for her anger and annoyance to dissolve. As Esther immediately said, oh, you precious one, I love you so much. How wonderful you're trying to help grandma pack. <laughs> Nothing else changed, right? Jerry's still there in her way, annoying. Well, he was annoying, but now she was coming from a place of love within herself. We change our perception if we remember. We change our perception. Third, A, anchor. Anchor your heart in love. No, no more powerful vibration than that. As you just saw in the illustration, when we anchor ourselves in our, in our hearts in love, we have level of vibration. Peace is the byproduct of love. Yeah, they go together, perfect. they all go together. All the qualities of spirit are not separate. They're all one, and they all fall under love. They all fall under love. And I'm going to talk about that next week because that is a really big, the freedom of love or to love, to be in love with yourself. C, create reminders or rituals of living from a vibration of peace rather from an automatic reaction. Thich Nhat Hanh, the late, now he's the late, the late, uh, Buddhist Vietnamese monk who was nominated for the Nobel Prize for his remarkable peace work and the author of the book Peace is Every Step. When you called his center in France, Plum Village, the phone would ring once or twice. They would never answer it on the first, the first ring. But when it is answered, you can Feel the presence and the peace, the calm, the attention. And why is this? 
is because they have a peace reminder. This is really good. That is a part of the practice of every staff member there. Before picking up the phone, they consciously take two breaths to make sure that they are present, centered, and peaceful for the caller. So that is a practice that he implemented there. If you decide that your phone will be your spiritual alarm clock, then take that deep breath before answering, just even one really deep breath. And take a deep breath before answering, like the people in Thich Nhat Hanh's village, his monastery did. It might be helpful to put a little note to remind yourself or something on your phone so you don't go into that automatic pilot. And how about this? Before picking up the phone, take a deep breath and say, this is from Ernest Holmes, I am calm, poised, and at peace with the world. I am calm, poised, and at peace with the world. In one breath, that could be said. <laughs> Another practice from Thich Nhat Hanh is a breath break. I like that. A breath break. Say as you breathe, and he's famous for this. Breathing in, I calm my body. Breathing out, I smile. Dwelling in the present moment, I know this is a wonderful moment. Which leads us to our final idea, E, from our acronym, E. Enjoy each moment as a sacred moment of profound connection with spirit. Each moment, everything we do, bring ourselves fully with it. And maybe many of you have heard uh, about Brother Lawrence. He was a 17th century French monk whose writings about daily activities as a spiritual practice, I know I heard about this in the 90s from him, uh, inspired millions of people, mil millions of his readers. We know very little about his life except that he entered the monastery after years as a foot soldier. He described himself as a clumsy fellow who used to break everything. And apparently his superiors agreed. Clumsy and seemingly untalented, he was exiled to the monastery kitchen to wash pots and pans. But Brother Lawrence did not regard his job as a distraction from spiritual life or as something to be finished quickly so that he could get on with his prayers. Instead, he decided to use washing the dishes and every other activity that he did as an opportunity to remember God. And, to const and he constantly brought his attention back into focus. A great way to live in the now moment. Be present. When you're in the shower, be present of, of, of the beauty of it, the soap of whatever you're using to clean your body, just being present is a form of prayer. When we're doing the dishes, just absolutely be present. This is the divine activity taking place. So several, after back to Lawrence, Brother Lawrence, after several years, the results of his practice became so evident that even the abbot of the monastery went to him for advice. And Brother Lawrence was able to make this remarkable statement. This time of busyness does not, with me, differ from the time of prayer. And in the noise and clutter of my kitchen, while several people are at the same time calling for different things, I possess God in great tranquility. As if I were upon my knees receiving the sacred sacrament which takes us back, it takes us back to the first idea, prayer to simply experience God. We can't have a relationship with something we are not even aware of. That divine essence within us, that's what we, we worship, that's what we uh, align with, that's what we adore within us, always. My, your friend, my friends, the peace, 
is between you and God. It's between you and God. It's not between you and anyone else. Any set of circumstances, as difficult as that can be to accept sometimes when we have difficult people in our lives, it's already with you in every moment of every day. You have the innate freedom to experience it right here and right now. So I'd like to close with a prayer from Science of Mind. So just breathe a nice deep conscious breath. As I read you The Majestic Calm by Ernest Holmes. My inner mind is still. My soul reflects the most high. My spirit is the spirit of God. In the great calm of the all good, I rest in peace and serenity. My life is now reflecting the perfect whole. I am peace. I am calm. I am serenity and complete satisfaction. I am one with God. I am filled with peace. And so, my friends, we take that peace with us throughout this week. We take it with us, we embody it, we, we deepen into it, and we allow it to guide our every, every thought, our every perception, every aspect of our lives. And so it is. And so it is.